This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Peninsula Regional Medical Center. It is cold outside and we are spending a lot more time inside and that means germs are hanging out inside as well. And we all know what that means. Our chances of getting sick, pretty good. Pretty good. And from the crud that comes with the cold to the nasty stomach bug, we're going to cover it all in today's Ask the Doc. Yes, the doctor is in, PRMC's Chief Quality Officer and Hospitalist, Dr. Chris Snyder. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. Thanks for having me. You ready for the first big question that I know you've never heard before? Yep. Is there a way to know the difference between the stomach bug and food poisoning just based on the symptoms? <laughs> Almost an everyday question, so whether it's family or friends or patients, but um, there's really no way to determine them, although stomach bugs go away usually, 24, 48 hour bug. Mm -hmm. most of the time. Right. Food poisoning typically will cause bleeding also. Um, so it can be pretty uh, pretty aggressive and typically you don't have fevers with food poisoning. So most of the time a stomach bug you're gonna have the viral syndrome with the aches and the fever and all those good things. So there's a different um, perspective. You also have to eat a food that's high risk. So your dairy products, your raw foods, etc. So does it hit suddenly or does it take a little bit of time? Food poisoning? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, usually within 24 hours of ingestion you're going to get rip roar and diarrhea, usually mm -hmm. nausea, vomiting. Mm -hmm. um, and that will progress and get worse and not get better. So typically your common cold with diarrhea and all gets better. So usually in 24, 48 hours. So if you're going 48 hours and you're still having problems and you're seeing some bleeding, probably a good idea to see one of us so we can culture you up and make sure nothing yeah, else cooking. Yeah. With what? Yeah. All right. Um, the next question, it seems like every time I fly, I end up getting a cold. Mm -hmm. Someone suggested taking those vitamin C boosters. Do they really work? Yeah, no, probably not. Um, you know, again, there's some science around vitamin C, but it's not really curative. Um, I, I think uh, vitamin C probably has some good cellular st uh, stability uh, effects in your body, but um, unfortunately, the viruses are going to do what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, did you know a sneeze is 100 miles an hour usually? Oh, goodness. <laughs> and it travels 20 feet. So. Oh. So again, you know, um, and the reason I bring that up is all this common cold stuff is back to the old hand washing thing. Right. Jimmy and I right. like to share elbows, mm -hmm. but um, um, you know, the hand hygiene's key with this to protect yourself. And flying on an airplane, you're basically in a locker with uh, 100 people. Yeah. So, yeah. And half of them are sick this time of year, so sure. yeah. it's mm -hmm. a challenge. So hand hygiene, and, and again, unfortunately, you have to breathe the same air. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't do you any good when you sneeze to go at you. No, most of the time the arm's better. Covering up period would be nice because um, remember 20 feet, so right. mm -hmm. go across the studio and back <laughs> at 100 miles an hour. So. At 100 miles an hour. Yeah, so covering whatever you do, cover. Just wash your hands if you use your hands, that's fine. Wash mm -hmm. your hands, that's the big, okay. Um, when I get a cold, I get so congested that when I blow my nose, it actually gives me a splitting headache. Does blowing your nose actually help? Um, blowing your nose, excessively can actually be worse because it actually forces air negatively into the sinuses. So you have sinuses here, here, uh, so your frontal, your sphenoid sinuses. So the nose is the drain for the ears, the eyes, the nose, the throat. It all drains to the back of the nose. Um, so when you blow, you do clear it out, but blowing excessively can force air into those pipes that drain into the nose so it can right. create problems with congestion. So it can actually make it worse. Oh, wow. um, so you just don't want to do it excessively. Um, a gentle blowing is fine, but again, that 100 mile an hour thing with the sneeze. Mm -hmm. So you're forcing air negatively into your head, uh, into air spaces. So um, blowing your nose is fine, but you see folks walking around honking all day long. It's, you know, uh, it's a detriment. And again, wash your hands every time. <laughs> you're going to end every question with wash your hands. Please wash your hands. It is absolutely the most preventative way to protect yourself. All right, next question. It, uh, it's something we address every winter. Uh, mom says that uh, when you go outside without a coat, you're mm. going to get a cold. Mm -hmm. Is that true? No, that's not. So temperature really doesn't have an effect. The interesting thing is when you go outside and you are sick and your temperature drops, you start getting rigors and chills. So I think historically that was probably the problem. You already had a cold going out and then you went out and dropped your temperature and your body was trying to recalibrate itself. Ah. So no, uh, t temperature really, no, I've not seen any science around that ever in my entire life, but mm -hmm. uh, keep telling it. I mean, but still wear yeah. a coat. And wash your up, hands. And wash your hands. <laughs> More the problem, wash your hands, cover your sneezes and uh, don't share uh, too much with people. And wear a really cool tie. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, my no. baby. 
Who's that again? That's my daughter. Yeah, she's actually 19 now. So oh. She's uh, flying back from California this weekend, so I'm excited. <laughs> that is the greatest yeah. Christmas tie of all time. It is a super that cool tie. That is terrific. Well, That's thanks. awesome. Thank you. Dr. Chris Snyder, thank you so much. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Merry to Christmas. you. Elbow bump.